Hi, Genevieve Jacobs from Region Media with this week's news wrap that comes from the National Portrait Gallery where the National Photographic Portrait Prize, one of the great events in the gallery's year, has just been opened and it is of course NAIDOC week which makes it a particularly fascinating time to be looking at the winner a spectacular, spectacular portrait. Sheridan Burnett's with me and she's the exhibitions manager. Sheridan, tell us about this extraordinarily powerful image which has picked up the National Photographic Portrait Prize for 2022. So this portrait was take, taken by Wayne Quillam um, and he took it on country. It's of a Yarakoon dancer. It's such a powerful image because, as Wayne says, um, it is culture. It looks like it's been taken in a studio, but it was actually taken on country um, and it's just beautiful and so powerful. Um, the contrast is amazing, the composi composition is amazing and just the colours in the okras, it just resonates with so many visitors and our judges, obviously, as well. Yeah, look, it's, a, it's an extraordinarily strong striking image. Eric Juncker Porter from Aracoon is in the portrait but embodying, as you say, the idea of culture, of deep connection to land and it couldn't be more appropriate. There are lots of people flocking into this exhibition. I know it's always a high point for the gallery. What's the response been like from the public? Um, I think this year people have really wanted to see the P more than other years because we've had such a difficult couple of years and the diversity of images this year really represents the difficult times that we've had but also some of the joyous times that we've had as well. And one of the joys of the National Portrait Prize is that, uh, Photographic Portrait Prize, is that anyone can enter. So you actually can and do have amateur photographers, people who are just expert, diligent, thoughtful, capturing images from their backyard, their own community. And, and they can sit on these walls alongside the works of really distinguished photographers like Wayne. It is. It's one of the most democratic prizes, I think, in the art world in Australia. And one of the most rewarding things that I get to do every year is we have an artist preview where we bring in all of the artists and you have professional photographers that have been, you know, top of their game, meeting and talking with amateur photographers. And there's a real exchange of ideas and creativity. Now there are some, some very powerful images here. I want you to tell me about the highly commended image which comes not from Australia but from the very contested space on the border between Central America and the United States. Yep, so the Entrable piece is open to Australian citizens. So Adam Ferguson's an Australian photographer living in New York and he took a portrait of um, Carlos Suyos, who's a Guatemalan migrant um, with his um, son, eight-year-old son, on the Mexican-US border. The amazing thing about this portrait is he set, up, he set it up and gave them a um, button to click when they wanted to take the image. And it just captures a really powerful, tender moment um, when these two people are in extreme distress but showing love to each other. It's actually an extraordinarily powerful image. The father is cradling his son and you just see that cord for the self-clicker snaking along near his feet. Beautifully done. Of course, Sheridan, there's actually a lot else going on at the National Portrait Gallery. You've had Shakespeare to Winehouse. I understand that that has broken all records. Yeah, so it has been our most successful exhibition ever. Um, so it's still on until the 17th of July so if visitors haven't been or your audience hasn't been definitely come in it's a once in a generation opportunity to see these portraits they will be unlikely to ever leave London again together um, in certainly my life um, but probably even um, my niece and nephew's life so um, definitely come in and see it um, it's features the highlights really from the National Portrait Gallery London's collection. And we've, we've got lots of other things going on in the gallery, also the Darling Prize. Yep, so the Darling Portrait Prize is in its second year, thanks to the generosity of, the, of Marilyn Darling, who's one of our founding patrons. Um, it's a $75,000 cash prize, um, which Jack Grantford won for her portrait 2020, um, which shows her the challenges and um, emotions she faced during lockdown. And it's just a, a really dynamic, interesting uh, portrait. I was lucky enough to be here with Jack and when she was told she was the winner and she's just an amazing artist who the arts community really loves and I'm just so happy that she won. Sheridan, there's also an opportunity for people to get involved. Tell us about the People's Choice. Yeah, people can visit our website at portrait.gov.au and vote for their pe People's Choice for both prizes. It's a $5,000 prize for the National Photographic Portrait Prize and a $10,000 prize for the Darling Portrait Prize. Um, and we would really love to hear what people's favourites are. 
I'm really keen to see how that works out too. So lots and lots of reasons to be here in the National Portrait Gallery. Now, as we mark NAIDOC week, a particularly apt moment, but for all the riches that there are here. Look, also making news on the website, we've been talking about Tom McClucky's appeal for stiffer sentences for those who are caught driving dangerously and endangering life, taking life. Uh, Tom's son lost his life and that has prompted heartfelt discussion on the Riot Act. We've also been talking about the defamation findings against Canberra Notice Board. Um, that's propped up this week and it's a stark reminder of some of the dangers that are implicit in social media and the responsibilities that Facebook groups and other social media users have towards defamation. Uh, also a really tragic incident, leptospirosis, which is a frightening dog disease, has claimed its first victim in Canberra. We've got the story of the dog who lost their life and the tunnels and caves under Lake Burley Griffin, like Swiss cheese apparently. Who knew? Well, perhaps those who were here before the lake flooded, but it's a fascinating story of a honeycomb of caves and holes underneath the lake. All that and more on the Ride Act this week. We've got a daily digest and a weekly newsletter that drops into your inbox every Thursday with all the news, all the stories. Come and join the great big Canberra conversation. Come along to the National Portrait Gallery and see these amazing, amazing works. Sheridan, thank you so much for your time. I'm Genevieve Jacobs. This is Region Media.